Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Ember series, and let's continue on helpers. I will continue working on our project with some built-in helpers, and then I'm gonna teach you how to write your own custom helpers, and then we will come back. So let's get started. Since the item detail page and then also the home page share the same component, you will notice the, we don't need the color on the home page, and then we want the price tag to be bigger on this page so we can attract more users to click on it. So let's go to the product details template and only show colors when needed. So here we add an if block. Once you save it, you can see this disappear because we don't provide it in the home page and this default to be false. But if we click on it, it doesn't show either. So we need to add that into the details page. We're going to set its details to true. And then in the details page, we see the color. But if we go back to the home page, we don't see it. Then let's change the price tag. And this time, we're going to use unless. So class equal to unless it's details and give it a h4 which is the bigger form size we use unless you can think it as a uh, if not so in this case if it's not details use the h4 class and then the form size is bigger then if we go to the details page it's the original form size now let's try to write some custom helper so you can see here for each price, we add a dollar sign here. If you go to the shopping cart page, you can see here we might also need the dollar sign. And, and we wanted to format our price. Like for this like 25 bucks, we want it to be 25.00. So because we're going to reduce all this functionality, it's a good time to have a custom helper. So let's create a helper by Ember. G helper and we call it currency let's look at the structure of the ember helper so we import it from the ember component and then within this function block we passed our custom function so the first argument here is params it's a list of parameters we pass into the helper block for example here we have a currency 25 so the 25 is the first parameters inside the params array. If we destruct the first entity from this array, which is a number here, and this will equal to 25. You can see the second argument here is the hash. It allows us to define a key and then pass the value into this helper. So for example, we wanted to define the sign for this currency. So let's comment out this part. And we destruct the sign from the hash then let's calculate the integer part of the price which how many dollars we have based on the given number and then we calculate how many cents inside the price if cents only have one digit we need to add a zero in front of it After we get all the information, let's concatenate all these things together. Let's start running our app. After we built, we go to the cart template and then use our currency helper. Now we need to specify the sign of the currency, which will be the dollar sign here. And let's save and refresh. You can see Right now, it has the dollar sign in front of it and has two zero in here. So right now, if we change the sign to the other things like this, it will change in here as well. Since in our project, we only want to use the dollar sign. So and we don't want it to specify the sign string every single time. Like we remove it in here. So what we need to do is to give it a default value. So let's say if the hash is empty and then the default sign will be the dollar sign and let's save it. It's still looking good. And let's apply the currency helper into other place and save it. 
everything looks good. Not only in the car, we also need to show the currency inside the product details. So let's go there and remove the dollar sign here and use the currency helper and then save it. We go back to the home page. You can see, oh, we have an extra dollar sign. Let's remove. So now it looks good. And if we go to the details page, it all looks good. Now let's go back to the currency helper file. You can see here we are using a function based helper. Instead, we can write a class helper. So here we're going to import the base class and change the function into a class. Then this will be wrapped into a built in function, which is the compute. So we basically override this function. And let's save this. You can see it's still working. Let's do some fancy stuff with the helpers. So we wanted to support such a feature. If you click on the image, it's going to zoom in. So let's close this and this and go to the item page because we only want this functionality in the details page. So we wanted to set up our logic in here. So we'll go to the item controller and define a Boolean value here. It's zoomed. The default to false. And then we're going to have an action which is going to toggle in the zoom to status. Then we add a CSS class to the product component. And we pass the toggle zoom function down to the product image component. Let's add CSS class first to see how it looks. So we go to the styles, products, and we add a new CSS class here, which is the its zoom. So within this function, we're going to make the image full width and then reduce the width of the detail section. So let's set the zoom default to true and to verify the CSS class. You can see this is much bigger. So if we go back to the home page and click on another product, it should also works. But seems we have some issue in here that's trying to resolve. So it says cannot read a property image of undefined. So which means this don't, it doesn't work. So I think the issue is coming from the, the color because the controller of the, uh, the because the Ember controller is a singleton. So this only assigned once. And then for the second product, it has a different default color. So what are we going to do here is to copy this part. And then let's go to the routes slash items and we do set up controller. And then we need to make sure the color is equal to this to correct the color. So here the argument is controller and the model. Don't forget to do super and move those into here. And then the controller color should be update every time we navigate to this route. So let's save it, it works. And if we go back and go here, it also works. So now let's close this and go to the image template and then handle the logic here. As long as we click on the image, we're going to toggle the zoom status. So here we use the pass in function here and let's save it. So if we click it, it, it back to normal. And if we click again, it's going to zoom in. So the zooming is not very smooth. So let's set up the CSS transition to make it look better. So go back to the product.css and set up a transition of the width and copy this to the product details as well. After we save it, if we click on it, you can see the animation and how smooth is this transition. So since this defaults to be uh, not zooming, so let's change this value back to false. That's pretty much about this tutorial. Hit the like button if you like it. Subscribe if you want more. So for the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about the Ember service. See you next time.